What's going on guys? John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, I want to show you how to do for loops with Python. All right, in the last video, we looked at while loops. In this video, I want to look at for loops. But before we get started, if you like this video, want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube to get $22 off membership. So that's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee of just $27, which is insanely cheap. Okay, so for loops. While loops were pretty cool. They look just like if statements, so it's easy to remember. But for loops are good too because for loops let you iterate through things. So if you've got a list, you can iterate through each item in the list. If you've got a dictionary, you can iterate through each key value pair in the dictionary. If you've got a variable, you can iterate through every letter in the variable using a for loop. So let's just go ahead and build one of these guys. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create a variable. Let's call it name. And let's go John, right? So to create a for loop is very simple. We just go for and then we just pick a variable. And I'm going to call it x. And it's, this is just a placeholder variable. So as we loop around, it's sort of like our counter. Uh, it, it keeps track of which thing we're on in the loop. Uh, we don't have to specifically name this as or call this as something. You know, with our counter, we set it equal to zero. We're not going to set this equal to anything. It's just going to be in there and it's going to keep track of stuff for us. It's a property of the for loop. So for x in and then name the thing you want to loop through. And we want to loop through this variable name. And we just go call a uh, colon. And then just do whatever you want to do. So let's just print out x to the screen, right? So if we save this, and we're in our hello.py file. And let's run this again, we get j o h n and you see it's looping through and every time it goes one character prints out the thing loops around prints out the next thing, the next thing and the next thing. And that's pretty much it. So very, very simple, uh, but very powerful. Where's our code at? There we go. And uh, you can use this for all kinds of stuff. Now, we could name this variable anything. So in this case, I would probably have called it in, right for in 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 name, right. So name starts with the n, I would use n for the placeholder. And then we just need to change that right here. But you know, you could call this anything you want, you could call this for bananas in name, print bananas, right. Now, a convention is to use singular. So banana in name, right because you're doing a singular thing each time you're doing each character, but just just a convention. So let's change this back to x. Now, like I said, you can do this with variables, you can do it with lists, you can do it with dictionaries, anything you want. So let's create a quick list here. And let's go john, Bob. And who else Mary, right? So now I would probably change this from name to names, because there's more than one. So let's call this names. So here I might call something like for name in names, right? Since this is plural, and it has many names, we want to pull out a name from names, right? So in this case, that's how I would name this placeholder variable, because it just sort of makes sense to me, right? it's easy to understand what we're doing. If we look at this code, we're calling, we're pulling out a name from names, right? So if we save this, come back here, and run this guy again, we get on each line, John, Bob, Mary, it's printing out the item, one item at a time, one item per line for our list. So very cool. And that's just so useful. I mean, so many times you have a huge list and you want to just iterate through that whole list and do something based on each one. Now we we're just printing here, but we could do anything. This is a block of code, just like our conditional statement or if else statement, just like our while loop, we have these blocks of code that are designated by this indentation that was as we've seen before. And that's pretty cool. So uh, I mentioned we could do dictionaries as well. Dictionaries are a little bit different because they have two things. They have a key and a value pair with our list, we just have one thing each item, right? So it's easy to iterate through with one item. How do we do it when there's more than one item like in a dictionary? So let's create this fave pizza. 
uh, dictionary. And let's go John and John likes what? Pepperoni. I do like pepperoni, comma. And Tim. Tim likes mushroom. And who else did we have? We had Mary. Mary likes cheese. Okay, so I think that's right. So let's go change this from names to fave underscore pizza. Now, this is where we need to change things a little bit. So in our dictionary, like I said, we have two items. We have a key and a value pair. Every item has a key value pair, key value, right? So we need two variable placeholders. So like X and Y, and you just put a comma between them. Now, X and Y works, of course, but I'm a big uh, proponent of naming things what they are. And in this case, we're calling a key and a value, right? This is the key, this is the value. So if we're gonna make up some name for a variable, why don't we just name it what they are, the key and the value? So it makes it easier to keep track of what's what. So, and again, we can print out, say the key. So if we save this, so for each key in favorite pizza, print out the key, right? So if we save this, run it again. Uh oh, too many values to unpack. Oh, you know what? I forgot something. It's, there's one more thing here. So um, we need to call the dot items function. So we need to put all of the items that are in our dictionary into a thing that's accessible. And we just do that by calling the fave pizza dot items, right? So that's another little difference with your for loop. So if save this, now it'll work, almost certainly. Boom, John, Tim, and Mary. So uh, we could change this around. Instead of key, we could have value, right? So if we save this and run it, now it'll print out pepperoni, mushroom, and cheese. I mean, we can pull, we can do anything we want in here. So we could go print, um, let's call key plus, let's concatenate likes, and then concatenate value, and then concatenate um, pizza, right? I think that'll work. So if we save this, that looks correct. It's working on the fly. We're just having fun here. So John likes pepperoni pizza, Tim likes mushroom pizza, Mary likes cheese pizza, and there you go. Like I said, you can do anything you want in this block of code, but these are the important things, the key and the value. And like I said, we could change this from X, from key to X and from value to Y. If we did that, we would just change that to X and that to Y. And if we run this again, we're gonna get the exact same thing because we haven't really made any changes. We're just naming the variables different. But like I said, I like to name them what they are and that's a key and that's a value. So let's just name them key value. Then it's a lot easier to keep track of them in our head. Or later on, if we look at this code again and go, okay, now what were we doing here? Oh, we're printing a key and value from, what is this? Oh, it's a dictionary. Oh, dictionaries have key value pairs. I must be printing this and this for the key value. It's just, it's just easier. So pretty cool. Those are for loops. Like I said, I like while loops, um, but for loops are great for iterating through things. And you're gonna always wanna iterate through things you might get something, some data from a database and need to iterate through each one for loop. Perfect, right? <laughs> it's just easy and uh, not a whole lot to it. Not a lot of code to have to write. And you know, with a while loop, we had to make a counter and we had to set it equal to a number and we had to keep track of it. We had to increment it each time. It's kind of a little tricky. None of that for the for loop. It, it just does it all automatically. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, and check out codeme.com where you can use coupon code YouTube to get $22 off membership. I must be out of my mind. So you pay just $27 to access all my courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 50,000 students cannot talk this morning learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codeme.com. We'll see you in the next video.